It's hard to believe, but we're already getting close to the season of Lent. Lent is a time of fasting and prayer and almsgiving, the three great Jewish practices that they talk about as the foundation of the world, as the heart of the covenant. Christians have always embraced this in the season of Lent. We call it 40 days of Lent, even though it's a little bit longer, because of the 40 days that Jesus spent in the desert and the 40 years that the Israelites wandered. Lent is meant to be a season of renewal and a season of grace for all of us. And yet, I think the reality is that a lot of us want to have a good Lent, maybe even a great Lent. A lot of us want to encounter Christ. We would love it if God ripped open the heavens and started to talk to us. But it's hard to have the right ideas. It's easy, or what I think happens to us all, is that we want to have a great Lent, and then we start thinking about it, and then it's Ash Wednesday, and pretty soon it's the second or third week, and already half of the season is gone. And then by the time we really get things in gear, much of it is often past us. This video is meant to help you change that, because now we're before the season of Lent. It's a time where you can take a step back and begin to pray and begin to think. And there's all kinds of things that can be done. The reality is the message of conversion is at the heart of what Jesus preaches in the gospel. It's the very first thing that he begins to say, repent and believe in the gospel. One of the litmus tests for Christianity, if you're living it right, is does it call you to conversion? In our lives, it's easy to become comfortable. It's easy to uh, get stuck in the world. And I'm saying that to myself just as much as anyone else. But Christ calls us to conversion. The presence of God in my life and in yours is a call to be with him, to give up our hearts, to surrender, to live as disciples, to work in union with the Holy Spirit. And that requires conversion. We have to turn away from our own wills. We have to turn away from the things that we're attached to. We have to make room in our hearts so that God can be with us, so that the life of grace can grow. And now is a great time to begin to ponder this. Lent is founded around these three great practices, prayer and fasting and almsgiving. And it's good as you think about the season of Lent, maybe to choose one from each category. Lots of times Catholics talk about giving something up for Lent. I think a good paradigm is to give up something, but also to choose something special to do. In the category of prayer, there's lots of opportunities that we have from holy hours to the times where the church is open. The Adoration Chapel at St. Mary's Cathedral is just down the road from our parish, and there's many more places to pray. It could be a rosary, it could be the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, but to find some way to grow in your life of prayer. Fasting is one of the things that is also tremendously good for us. Fasting is hard. It's not easy. We don't like it. I don't like it as much as anyone else. And yet, fasting is something necessary for our life in Christ. It can mean denying ourselves some kind of food, like fasting from meat on Friday. It can mean fasting from other things or other creature comforts. There's all kinds of things that can be done. Sometimes fasting can be in how we use our time. One of the best practices I did for Lent one year was setting a bedtime and a wake-up time. And it sounds easy until you try and practice it. And then there were times where it was fantastically difficult because it's like we want to justify it. We want, there's things to do, there's things that need to be done or you need to sleep in later. But it was a great practice to do for the season of Lent one year. There's all kinds of ways to fast and that's important for us. Almsgiving means giving to the poor, giving out of what we have. For some people, this can be making a particular donation to something like the Great Plains Food Bank or another local organization. It might be donating time, donating part of your livelihood. Maybe it's donating your space and the home of your family to invite people in. Again, there's all kinds of things that can be done but almsgiving helps us live in a right relationship with money, 
with material things and the things of the world. So prayer and fasting and almsgiving. Make a plan for the season of Lent and open your heart to the grace of God. I'm sure he has many beautiful gifts in store for you and for me. If only we're ready to prepare our hearts and to open wide some space in our lives where the seed of his word can grow.